A national Petroleum Company Limited says the company is not working against the prosperity of the local refineries across the country. Contrary to reports being pushed in some sections of the media that it is sabotaging the refining of petroleum products in some domestic refineries. The group chief executive officer of the NNPCL, Samele Kiari, said this at the 42nd Nigerian Association of Petroleum Explorationist Annual International Conference and Exhibition in Lagos. There have been claims in some quarters that NPCL had been sabotaging the efforts of some refineries in the country by not providing crude oil for refining into petroleum products. The group GCEO says the National Oil Company has been supportive of local refineries by providing them with crude needed to refine petroleum products. We as NMPC are left with the, with the cross of making sure that this is made domestically available. That speaks to availability of crude oil into, for processing in the domestic market, provision of finished products in the domestic market, and also delivering gas into the domestic market. There's a queue in the fuel station tomorrow. Everybody will remember it's NMPC that didn't do it. Nobody cares to confirm whether or not many of the things that are being thrown around are our responsibility in the first instance. And what does it really mean that NMPC will guarantee energy security for our country? That means that we must lead in the production of oil and gas by every means, through partnering, direct investment, and anything else that we can do to make sure that there is domestic production of both oil and gas so that we can utilize them locally and we can also export them to make money so that we can expand the economy in other sectors. The NNPC boss reiterated the company's commitment to resolving Nigeria's energy crisis by ensuring energy security while disclosing the company's plan to build 12 CNG stations by 2025. Today, and I can confirm to you, by quarter one of 2025, there will be at least 12 mother stations that will be available for CNG. And, and not only that, we are also building, I don't want to give the location before people will say, why is it not in my village, so that the disclaimer issue will come. We are building a, a mini LNG plant that will deliver gas into the market and also sustain the growth in the CNG delivery and also make gas available to mini power plants and other gas-based industries in the short term. Away from that, now practitioners in Nigeria's marketing space say strategic partnership, innovation, and creativity are tools businesses need to enjoy sustainable success in the country's volatile economic environment. These and other issues form the trust of a conversation at the public lecture of the Ikecha chapter of the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria. More in this report. The National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria is a professional body for individuals involved in marketing and related fields. The Institute's main role is to regulate and standardize marketing practice through professional examination, certification and training. The Ikeja branch of the Institute put together this conference with focus on transforming marketing challenges and strategic opportunities for sustainable success in volatile times. Speakers here agreed that the topic is up, considering the present economic situations in the country. Please encourage you, encourage you. Players in the marketing industry need to explore available opportunities, adopt technology to help improve productivity at all times. What we intend to do and bring out of this is to ensure that brands and marketing professionals are consistently equipped to take advantage of the disruptive ecosystem that we find ourselves now so that we don't find ourselves being jolted out of reality because we are not prepared. And so on, we also go deep down into um, universities and institutions to make sure that we carry the students along to be able to be prepared. Every brand, depending on their size, depending on their um, business, should be able to take an inward look into their businesses and see where they are, where the impact hits them most, and begin to relook their strategies. I also believe there's an opportunity for brands to look at new opportunities from a diversification point of view. Others say brands must go beyond consumer experience to beat consumer intimacy. 
They believe this will help improve consumer experience across the board. The challenge is facing marketing is ability to keep up with the pace as these consumers are changing. There's a whole lot of challenge facing the consumer from issue of price increase to the issue of inflation to the issue of economic pressure and all of that. So keeping a close tab of this consumer, and like I said, there's nothing like brand loyalty anymore. Many of those consumers are changing by the second. So for a brand that is active and agile, must be able to keep a close tab on them, be able to monitor them, they'll know what exactly they want at every point in time. An important take-home from this gathering is that marketers must embrace artificial intelligence. Experts say this will make jobs easier, enhance creativity in operations across the country. Well, the market closed positive. We'll bring you details in subsequent bulletins. But finally, on the news, food insecurity in Africa remains a critical challenge with over 20% of the continent's population experiencing hunger. Speakers at the Agricultural Summit in Abuja say African leaders should have a, con uh, a continent-wide policy harmonization and, of course, support women farmers to acquire more farmland. Helena Samede King's report will be back with sports news. Women play a crucial role in agriculture across Africa, contributing significantly to food production, processing and household food security. However, they face substantial challenges in assessing resources and opportunities such as land, credit extension services, improved seeds, fertilizers and technology. Despite their large contribution to agricultural labor, women own less land compared to men. This panel discussion on galvanizing home-based skills, potentials and re-engineering women in agriculture have discussed calling for more access to land and agricultural sensitization for women. The government needs to make sure that women have easier access to state land and, and um, uh, easier access when they buy land privately to ensure that they are safe. All the rights that we, we need in the country, you know, we're currently doing two metric tons when we need like eight metric tons. So if women had more lands and they were farming more rice, for instance, we might be able to meet, cover that gap. So we'll see improve, improved agricultural production and productivity across the value chain, not just production, but across the value chain. On the state of the agriculture sector in Africa, Basil Abia, a policy analyst, calls for harmonizations of African policies to turn the sector around. With the African free trade uh, area, why can't we not do that for uh, African policy making when it comes to food production and food security? So when you're able to enable that, that works. Yes, I know that uh, most of the interventions government-wise is based, is cooperative based, no doubt about that. But if you actually look at Africa as a continent, not a lot of continent-wide coordination has been done with regards deploying and using cooperatives for intervention programs. The seventh edition of the Agriculture Summit Africa focuses on Africa moving from food scarcity to sufficiencies. Addressing gender disparities in African agriculture could lead to improvement in productivity and food security, which would contribute significantly to reducing hunger and poverty across the continent. Helen Osamede Ekins, TVC News, Abuja.